योग कर्मसु कौशल हेलो फ्रेंड्स टुडे वी शैल टॉक अबाउट द पास्ट एंड प्रेजेंट ऑफ इंडियन वाइल्ड लाइफ एंड द चैलेंजेस फॉर द कंजर्वेशन दिस इज ए डिबेटेबल टॉपिक एंड मेनी ऑफ द रिसर्चर साइंटिस्ट फॉरेस्टर्स एंड वाइल्ड लाइफ बायोलॉजिस्ट हैज डिस्क्राइब्ड this is one of the most important uh, uh, topic for uh, indian people as our country is now uh, based on human population is leading our world the highest population human population of world is now in india along with it is one of the 12 mega biodiversity country and probably we have uh you know the 12th uh, wonderful wildlife existing or rather we can say coexisting with a large human population friends if we see the status of wildlife and if you compare it with our religion uh you are aware about samudra manthan and different avatars of the god vishnu in samudra manthan uh, the dev and danav has joined the ocean with a mountain and they have uh, found out various uh, ratnas from sea <coughs> this is a very well known uh, religious tale we don't know but it is concerned with our white life the uh, snake was used as a rope for the churning of sea airavat and elephant has come out from the sea and many other uh, biodiversity aspect has related with this story besides that the 10 different avatars of uh, uh, our uh, god like matsya avatar kurma avatar varah avatar narsi narsi avatar all these are animal gods matsya avatar is a fish kurma avatar is a tortoise varah avatar is a pig or a boar and narsi avatar is a human body with head of a lion so all this is nicely narrated in our religious history in our religion and plenty of incidents and stories we are reading since our childhood regarding the uh, wildlife connecting to our religious now if you see the uh, story of ram avatar that is in ramayana there are many characteristic like uh, characters like hanuman ji jatayu jambuwan all were uh, some of the animals hanuman ji is a symbol of monkey jatayu is a symbol of uh, vulture jambuwan is uh, narrated as a bear so these all are animals the coexistence of human and animals were depicted in our religious stories like ramayana mahabharata since several thousand years we are well aware about the vulture we were aware about the uh, jambuwan that is bears and hanuman ji that is uh, monkeys if any many of the city present days in india they have menace of monkeys the langurs and macaques but usually people people avoid damaging them because they see the monkey as our monkey god hanuman ji and they worship them they help them they protect them if any monkey get injured with electric electrocution or uh, a dashed with any car or anything many people will rush to that injured animal and try their best to save them this is our religious feeling 
with animals. You all must be very well aware about the connecting uh, of our wild animals or birds as a vehicle of many gods and goddesses in our Hindu mythology and culture. For example, uh, some of the god for uh, say uh, Bhageshwari Mataji or uh, Durga Ma, it is, uh, she is riding on lion, Yam is on uh, male buffalo, Brahmani is on Hans, Kartike is on peacock, uh, Sh Bhagwan Shiv uh, with uh, a snake around his neck and a Nandi in front of uh, Shiv temple as well as a turtle and so on. So this association of animals with God and goddesses is a symbol of Indian culture that the animals and men should have equal importance for their living. That means our society we cannot think without animals and hence the conservation and protection of animals is a part of our cultural heritage. Now if you see our tribal culture, they are very closely related with uh, forest and animals, plants and natural uh, things around us. For example, in many forest area of uh, Madhya Pradesh, you may come across a temple, the name of the god is Vaghoba. It is, it is on, on Vagh, Vagh that is tiger. So they, these tribal people, they worship tiger. So they never try to uh, harm the animal. On the contrary, it is a fantastic example of coexistence with wild animals. And that only happened in India, that is because of our religious feelings with our environment and at each and every component of our environment. So Vaghoba temple is uh, found in many of the forest area of Maharashtra and Madhya Pradesh. Similarly, if you see the example of uh, uh, Sundarbans, they call it Bon Bibi or Bon Devi. So that is uh, uh, the pronunciation is a, a Bengali pronunciation that is one Devi that is forest goddess and if you see the uh, the idol and the the temple description there is always a tiger is there within the temple so a sculpture of tiger that means they worship tiger and they believe that if we worship one devi the tiger will not harm us similarly the pea fowl uh, a picture of leopard a picture of snake all this, if you see the, the last slide, uh, this slide, uh, the pea fowl and the leopard and a snake, all these are the god and goddesses of our tribal people. So they are very close with our uh, each and every component of our nature. And they use forest, they use animals, they use wildlife, but for their own survival, not for the commercial purpose. And that is why the coexistence is nicely balanced in nature. Now, this worship of animals and trees is almost in all societies of India. You know that uh, one of our festival is Nag Panchmi. In many of the tribal area, they actually worship snake. They offer milk. Though they don't know that the snake never drink milk, being a carnivorous animal, they swallow their prey entire. But the people worship as uh, a god and goddesses. So, uh, uh, Sarmaliya Dada temple is a, almost everywhere in all the outskirts of villages in Saurashtra area. If you see the, the picture of uh, Bhagwan Datatre, there is always the, the god is surrounded by several animals. Uh, the dog is there, cow is there, some birds are there. So they are part of and as per the uh, myth and literature, uh, they are all gurus of Bhagwan Datatre.
we also worship trees for example people tree uh, ficus religiosa and word tree that is ficus bengalensis many uh, of our ladies they offer worship they just uh, uh, do a pradakshina and they uh, have uh, keep fast and we call it uh, word savitri vart and we we regularly offer our worship and puja to the people tree as a religious tree if you ask any the woodcutter to cut down a people tree in, in your premises out of 10 8 woodcutter will deny that to cut a people tree is a crime based on our religious feeling they say is brahm hatya nu paap lage so this is the the religious uh, asset of our country that we protect our environment by all these feelings the village people the tribal people who are not educated but they are they know very well how to protect their environment and surrounding area now in bhagavad gita it is said by from the krishna bhagwan's mouth that among animals i am the lion among birds i am the eagle that is garuda i am prahlad born among the demons and of all that measures i am time this is the quote in shrimad bhagavad gita so vatasya patrasya pute sayanam balam mukundam manasas may army all these shlokas in which the environment conservation the wildlife conservation is the base of our religious literature now not only in hindu uh, religion but see the example of uh, sikh religion uh, in guru granth sahib it is written that pavan pani dharti akash ghar mandar har bani that means all the component of nature whether it is a wind it is water it is soil it is akash that is vayu and our house itself and house of all animals surrounding us they are one of the component of god pavan pani dharti akash ghar mandar har bani so this is the height of our religion now if you see the uh, story of ram avatar that is in ramayana there are many characteristic like uh, characters like hanuman ji jatayu jambuwan all were uh, some of the animals hanuman ji is a symbol of monkey jatayu is a symbol of uh, vulture jambuwan is uh, narrated as a bear so these all are animals the coexistence of human and animals were depicted in our religious stories like ramayana mahabharata since several thousand years we are well aware about the vulture we were aware about the now see the uh, status of india the image of india in outside our country and within our country if you see some of the historical events the conservation in india was at top level and it was focused by political scenario also in prehistoric period for example idea of sanctuary was first suggested by chanakya kautilya and gave the word abhyaranya chanakya has written a book known as arthashastra that is economics of chanakya and in that economics he has mentioned that one third of the land of a country should be kept reserved for forest and natural area for the wild animal and that land mass should be known as abhyaranya that means the 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 sanctuary the word sanctuary was coined by chanakya more than 2.5000 years before and you will surprise to know that in united states embassy us based environmental attorney 
uh, and the author Bruce Rich has confessed in their assembly meeting that India has a rich history and tradition of wildlife conservation while Chandragupta Maurya was a great patron of conservation his minister Kautilya had not only authored detailed procedure of wildlife conservation but had also prescribed severe penalty provisions for those found guilty of cruelty to animals. Chandragupta's successor Samrat Ashoka had not only introduced forest protection laws but also ordered that all kind of animal should be protected from being slaughtered. One of his several edict had also said four-footed animals had to be absolutely protected. You will certainly knowing if you are uh, teaching ecology and wildlife, you must be knowing that the first codified law for animals in the world was given by India. And that was during the time of Samrat Ashok. And even the present law, that is Wildlife Protection Act 1972, is the considered to be a most comprehensive act in entire world. This is very famous story of uh, uh, love for nature in Bishnoi community. Uh, this uh, incidence was uh, occurred in 1731. That means in the, the first half of 18th century. Uh, Amrita Devi Bishnoi, a lady uh, from Khejrali village, very close to Jodhpur. It is hardly 10 kilometers from Jodhpur city. And it is said that the Maharaja Jodhpur want to prepare uh, a castle or a uh, palace and for that a large amount of timber wood was required and in Rajasthan area Jodhpur is a desert area and the Khejri that is uh, Prosopis uh, species uh, Khejudo what we call uh, in Gujarati that Khejri is a tree and this people the Bishnoi people they worship this tree as per their guru Jambaji they said uh, several 29 uh, uh, rules like Siksha Patri in Swaminan religion. This Jambaji has given 29 rule and that is why this community is named as Bish Noi 20 plus 9. So they have to follow this rule and to protect animals around them, to protect Khejri trees is a part of their religious duties. So this Amrita Devi has denied and requested soldiers not to cut Khejri village around their Khejri trees around their village. But in the princely state time, the soldiers and minister of king were not understood and they have started cutting the trees. And Amrita Devi has took leadership and she said, she hugged the tree and she said that you cut my head before cutting this tree. Unfortunately, the soldiers has killed Amrita Devi in front of all villagers. But the villagers were not afraid. Instead of that, Amrita Devi's three daughters of 14 to 19 years age they have hugged another three trees and they said we will not allow you people to cut our khajri trees when we are alive. Unfortunately, the soldiers has continued the slaughter and 360 Bishnoi people of Khejrali village and surrounding area, they have assassinated in protection of trees around that village. This is the benchmark story of love and affection towards environment and wildlife for the local community. There is no any such incidence in entire world 
where this many number of people has assassinated themselves for the protection of environment government of india has declared amrita devi bishnoi prize for the conservation of nature and natural resources by ministry of environment and forest from the year 1980 onwards so this is the indian culture and our heritage and that is why even though the highest human population in world that is 1.45 billion people and many of them almost 50% of our human population is coexisting with our pristine wildlife and that is why we are still at one of the 12 mega biodiversity country of world now not only in hindu uh, religion but see the example of uh, sikh religion uh, in guru granth sahib it is written that pavan pani dharti akash ghar mandar har bani that means all the component of nature whether it is a wind it is water it is soil it is akash that is vayu and our house itself and house of all animals surrounding us they are one of the component of god pavan pani dharti akash ghar mandar har bani so this is the height of our religion now uh, look at this rich uh, biodiversity of uh, our country uh, zoological survey of india has carried out some survey uh, some uh, status survey and according to that uh, we have 8.58% mammalian diversity of the world india has 397 species of mammal and 4629 species of mammal recorded across the globe now out of that 8% mammalian diversity is within india similarly almost 1300 birds that is almost 10% <coughs> uh, sorry almost 13.66 that is 14% of avian diversity bird diversity is within our country the uh, land mass of our country is 2.4% of the world but we have more than 24% of biodiversity in our country we have more than 7 sorry uh, we have more than 7.46% almost 7.5% of total biodiversity we have against only 2.4% of land mass now see this is the richness of our country 7.9% of reptiles 4.66% of amphibian 11% of fish 5.65% of protocordates these are the richness of our biodiversity if you look at this arthropods mollusca protista angiosperms gymnosperms pteridophytes bryophytes lichen fungi 20% of the fungi recorded across the world are found within the india within our country so 14500 species of fungi found in our country 17500 variety of uh, angiosperm found in india and of them almost 5000 that is are endemic to india endemic that is they nowhere found in anywhere in the world so this is our rich biodiversity we are blessed because of our geographical location on globe of earth our climatic variation our richness of our uh, cultural heritage of our people these are the multi dimensional factors play a crucial role that we are still very rich in our natural biodiversity but that we have to maintain if we talk about few example of some wild animals uh say wolf at every uh, 13 august 
the entire world celebrate World Wolf Day. Do you know, after human being, that is Homo sapiens, the highest dispersal on world is being achieved by this animal. Yes, the wolves. So, the Indian grey wolf, it is believed that the population of grey wolf in India is around 3000 and around 250 in Gujarat. It is believed that. But out of that, a stronghold of this wild population is there in Bhal region of Bhavnagar and Ahmedabad district. Now, it is also in Bhutan district. So, Canis lupus palipus is the top predator of our grassland ecosystem. And these animals is threatened. It is critically endangered now because of its uh, status that people think that it is cattle lifter. Particularly the, the person who are uh, keeping goats and sheep, they uh, treat this animal as their enemies. And the population of wolf has gone down to a very high uh, level. We have lost many of the area. Uh, the, the wolf has lost his existence from many of its natural distribution area. Another uh, example if we take about our national animal, tiger. We celebrate 29th July as a World Tiger Day. Do you know why? Because the celebration is done on 29th July as a reminder of the agreement signed by countries in St. Pittsburgh uh, where the Tiger Summit in Russia in 2010, 2010 to raise awareness about the decrease in tiger population globally. Also, the representative declared that tiger populated country would make effort to almost double the tiger population by the year 2022. That was the objective of that summit in 2010. That 10 year was given to achieve the target. And I would say that as per the latest Tiger Estimation Report released by our Honorable Prime Minister Narendra Bhai Modi, the India's Tiger population is 2,967 Tigers. This is the highest number of Tiger a country has globally. India has 75% of the global Tiger population. So, we can have a matter of proud about our wildlife conservation made by Ministry of Environment and Forest, Government of India. Let us throw some light to the historical uh, references of this animal. It is said that many of the literature has uh, given that 1900, in the year 1900, that is the beginning of 20th century, tiger population in India was 40,000 tiger. Out of 981 protected area in India, today, they were actually, out of them, 87 were private game reserve of British officers. And 277 protected area where earlier in historical time before independence they were belonging to private game reserve that is hunting reserve for the princely states of India that is Indian princes and specifically protected by that princely state for hunting purpose. Some of the records authentic record, the published records given by Bombay Natural History Society 
and a natural history journal published from West Bengal, Kolkata. They have mentioned that Maharaja of Sarguja, Ramanuj Saran Singh Dev, he has hunted 1150, 1150 tigers. Only one person has slaughtered. An unofficial record is 1400 tiger. Now you imagine a top predator. Tiger is a top predator of our forest area. And naturally, the recruitment of tiger population is slow because it is a natural balance. If you see the uh, pyramid of number, ecological pyramid of number, the top predator are always less in number. And when they are killed in large number, we are breaking the natural food chain. Similarly, see the Maharaja Gulab Singh Ji of Reva, he has hunted 900 tigers. Maharaja Fateh Singh Ji of Udaipur, 500 tigers. Maharaja Nripendra Narayan Singh Ji of Kuch Bihar, West Bengal, 365 tigers, 311 leopards, 207 rhino, 438 buffaloes, 133 bears, 259 sambars, 318 barking deers, 48 bison or Indian gore. Now you see this list of hunting record for them, for the these uh, uh, Indian princes were, were taking a proud that a man has killed this many number of tigers. But the most unfortunate thing is this hunting activity which was initiated by Britishers. It has taken toll of our pristine wildlife because we have lost almost all tigers by 1972 when our Wildlife Protection Act was enacted. Now not only in Hindu uh, religion but see the example of uh, Sikh religion. Uh, in Guru Granth Sahib, it is written that Pavan, Pani, Dharti, Akash, Ghar, Mandar, Harbani. That means all the component of nature, whether it is a, um, a wind, it is water, it is soil, it is Akash, that is Vayu, and our house itself, and house of all animals surrounding us, they are one of the component of God. Pavan, Pani, Dharti, Akash, Ghar, Mandar, Harbani. So this is the height of our religion. Now if you see the uh, story of Ram Avatar that is in Ramayana, there are many characteristics like uh, characters like Hanumanji, Jatayu, Jambuvan, all were uh, some of the animals. Hanumanji is a symbol of monkey, Jatayu is a symbol of uh, vulture, Jambuvan is uh, narrated as a bear. So these all are animals, the coexistence of human and animals were depicted in our religious stories like Ramayana, Mahabharata since several thousand years. We are well aware about the vulture, we were aware about the uh, Jambuvan that is bears and Hanumanji that is uh, monkeys. If any, many of the city present days in India, they have menace of monkeys, the langurs and macaques. You all must be very well aware about the connecting uh, of our wild animals or birds as a vehicle of many gods and goddesses in our Hindu mythology and culture. For example, uh, some of the god for uh, say Vagheshwari uh, Mataji or uh, Durga Ma, it is, uh, she is riding on lion. Yam is on uh, male buffalo, Brahmani is on Hans, Kartike is on peacock, uh, Sh Bhagwan Shiv uh, with uh, a snake around his neck and a Nandi in front of uh, Shiv temple as well as a turtle and so on. So this association of animals with God and goddesses is a symbol of Indian culture 
that the animals and men should have equal importance for their life living that means our society we cannot think without animals and hence the conservation and protection of animals is a part of our cultural heritage The bastards are protected by laws in our country, but neighboring country do not have any kind of such laws. They are officially declaring declaring hunting season. They are giving permission for hunting of McQueen's bastard, and large number of bastards are being killed by hobbyists of falconry. They are illegally captured falcons. because in their country they do not have that uh, limitations of their laws we cannot keep any falcons in our country because it is prohibited in wildlife protection act but that act is existing in our country the birds do not have any boundaries of country the birds migrate from persian country to india and during their migration they passes through afghanistan baluchistan pakistan and when they passes through during winter they have been killed in large number it is said that almost 5000 mcqueens bustard annually every year is being hunted by this arab baluch and afghan people so this kind of activity is probably alarming for existence of a species we have lost uh, siberian crane because of this kind of activity now we don't have any siberian crane in bharatpur since last one decade we have lost that population the only because of hunting activity by neighboring countries let us throw some light to the historical uh references of this animal it is said that many of the literature has uh, given that 1900 in the year 1900 that is the beginning of 20th century tiger population in india was 40000 tiger out of 981 protected area in india today they were the another threat is because of our developmental activity we need green energy we need electricity and for that we are establishing windmills in the desert of kutch in the grassland of kutch the bustards are very short sighted birds they cannot see the power line while they are flying when they reach very close and when they see there is no time remain for this heavy bird to fly high to save itself and it usually collide with a power line and die you can see this both picture of uh, our kutch region the bustards are distributed now in the western part of kutch and that area is famous for windmill the power line of windmill is taking toll of bustards unfortunately now only three bird left but the same thing is happening in rajasthan jaisalmer area where also power line and windmills is taking toll of this critically endangered species we are losing them day by day now almost viable population from gujarat is lost less than 100 bird has now existing in entire india and that is the global population it is endemic species to india and we have lost because of habitat loss and hunting 
many species we have lost as per zoological survey of india director dr kailash chandra says india has about 7.49% of all the fauna species in world out of the land mass we have 2.4% and the faunal diversity we have is 7.49% now four species of fauna and 18 species of flora have gone extinct in india in the past few centuries according to wildlife survey organizations a a mao director of botanical survey of india he said india is home to 11.5% of flora of the world according to international union for conservation of nature and natural resources a new study has shown that since 1750 more than double the number of plants have disappeared from wild than birds mammal and amphibians we have not given our attention to the disappearing species it is it is very fast we are losing our pristine biodiversity we can see the disappearance of birds mammals and amphibians but we can't see the disappearance of a small or micro plants that is one of the important part of our biodiversity so this is the scenario what we are faced today now let us see the approximate number of extinct plant and animal species in last 600 years 600 years is not a big span if you compare the extinction rate with evolutionary process it is very fast it is said that it is 1000 to 10000 times faster than natural extinction process dinosaurs has also been extinct but there was no any ill effort of man behind the extinction of dinosaurs and if you see the history the dinosaur has naturally extinct extinction is is a natural process we accept that but human influence closely uh, causes has accelerated this extinction process very fast if you see this report from zoological survey of india total 504 animals and 596 plants were got extinct after the year 1600 since the 17th century onward we have lost almost 1100 species that means more than two species every year we are losing so this rate is considered to be very fast than that of the natural extinction process it is said in some of the example it is 1000 time faster whereas in some it is 10000 time faster than the natural extinction process this picture the bustards are protected by laws in our country but neighboring country do not have any kind of such laws they are officially declare, declaring hunting season they are giving permission for hunting of mcqueen's bustard and large number of bustards are being killed by hobbyist of falconry they are illegally captured falcons because in their country they do not have that uh, limitations of their laws we cannot keep any falcons in our country because it is prohibited in wildlife protection act but that act is existing in our country the birds do not have any boundaries of country the birds migrate from persian country to india and during their migration they passes through afghanistan baluchistan pakistan and when they passes through during winter they have been killed in large number it is said that almost 5000 mcqueen's bustard annually every year is being hunted by this arab baloch and afghan people 
So, this kind of activity is probably alarming for existence of a species. We have lost uh, Siberian crane because of this kind of activity. Now, we do not have any Siberian crane in Bharatpur. Since last one decade, we have lost that population. The only because of hunting activity by neighboring countries. Now, uh, if we see this uh, data of uh, dwindle, that is uh, the loss of wildlife, it is very interesting. The, there is two major factor of wildlife loss. The one is hunting, what ab about what we have discussed in detail. And the another one is habitat loss. The habitat loss is extensive in this region. Over 75 percent of the original Himalayan habitat has been already destroyed or degraded. Fuel wood, fodder collection has damaged our forest and grassland. Now, if you see this graph from 1970 to 2005, see the decline in uh, habitat. The tiger disappeared from Central Asia in 1970s. Tiger disappeared from Java in 1930s. Javan tiger has extinct. <coughs> tiger disappeared from China in 1990s. See, this is the steep decline of our wildlife. And uh, precisely, this graph is related with the tiger and the tiger habitat. So, historical tiger number, uh, tiger is increasing in number in India and decreasing uh, everywhere the habitat left is you can see uh, how much decline in loss of habitat and because of that the tiger population has dwindled. So, habitat and the existence of animal is relate closely related to each other. If you do not kill the tiger, but if you burn the forest, if you destroy its forest, where that poor animal will live? So, just protecting an animal is not sufficient. The protection of entire habitat is required. See, this is the conversion of land or diversion of forest land for the other purpose is, is very much damaging. You see, in uh, India, the data is given of only one year, that is 2019, January 1st to November 6th. That is only 11 month data and this data is given by Ministry of Environment and Forest. You see total 114, 114 square kilometer of forest land is converted for the other purpose. It is diverted for the other purpose in 22 states of India. Now this is a very serious matter. And if we want to protect our wildlife, the habitat has to be protected. Otherwise, it is very difficult to protect our uh, natural resources. Now, see the uh, status of India, the image of India in outside our country and within our country. If you see some of the historical events, the conservation in India was at top level and it was focused by political scenario also in prehistoric period. For example, idea of sanctuary was first suggested by Chanakya, Kautilya and gave the word Abhyaranya. Chanakya has written a book known as Earth Shastra, that is economics of Chanakya. And in that economics, he has mentioned that one third of the land of a country should be kept reserved for forest and natural area for the wild animal and that land mass should be known as Abhyaranya. That means the, the, the sanctuary, the word sanctuary was coined by Chanakya more than 2.5 thousand years before. And you will surprise to know that in United States Embassy, US based 
environmental attorney uh, and the author Bruce Rich has confessed in their assembly meeting that India has a rich history and tradition of wildlife conservation while Chandragupta Maurya was a great patron of conservation his minister Kautilya had not only authored detailed procedure of wildlife conservation but had also prescribed severe penalty provisions for those found guilty of cruelty to animals. Chandragupta's successor Samrat Ashoka had not only introduced forest protection laws but also order that all kind of animal should be protected from being slaughtered. One of his several edict had also said four-footed animals had to be absolutely protected. You will certainly knowing if you are uh, teaching ecology and wildlife, you must be knowing that the first codified law for animals in the world was given by India and that was during the time of Samrat Ashok and even the present law that is Wildlife Protection Act 1972 has changed. Now see the last population estimation was in 2020 and according to that the lion population is 674. So from 12 animal in 1880 now the population has reached to 674. Now the carrying capacity of gear forest is around believed to be around 300. Now what about the other animals? Then that is why these animals have migrated outside. A group has gone towards Girnar forest in Girnar hills ad adjoining and surrounding Junagadh city. One population has gone towards uh, a coastal area that is Kodinar and that uh, coastal forest. Another population has migrated towards Bhavnagar that is uh, residing on the coastal forest of Shetrunji river. So, Bhavnagar forest division has some good patches of forest uh, between uh, uh, Mahua and Palitana and Jesar area. Now, in this picture, you see a huge male lion is drinking water and just 10 foot away, a man is photographing him. Lion is really a loyal and royal animal. Usually, there is no any incident of attack, human attack by lion unless the animal was disturbed or any specific reason. But the scenario in neighboring country is absolutely different. This is the picture of probably of uh, East Asian countries. Hong Kong or China. They are torturing the animal. It is said that China has more tiger in captivity than that in natural condition. It was in natural condition. China has lost tiger, natural tiger population. Now whatever animal they have are in captivity and they are being used for such purpose. Merely a cruel purpose for eating its meat, drinking its blood and using their organs as a human food. All these countries, China, Hong Kong, Thailand, these are the countries which are using large number of wild animal articles. It is said that after narcotics, the wildlife article trade is the second highest illegal trade of world. Several thousand million do American dollar trade is being noticed by many of the intelligent agencies of many government across the world. And you see this monitor lizards which may be captured from the uh, rainforest area and the hide, the skin of that animal is being extracted out. This kind of activity is always harmful for wildlife and large number of wildlife are being transported illegally to the other countries for such purpose. If this thing has to be controlled properly, then only we can save our wildlife.
because the wildlife beyond the boundaries of protected area is really at the mercy of God. Uh, now, uh, if we see this uh, data of uh, dwindle, that is uh, the loss of wildlife, it is very interesting. The, there is two major factor of wildlife loss. The one is hunting, what ab about what we have discussed in detail. And the another one is habitat loss. The habitat loss is extensive in this region. Over 75% of the original Himalayan habitat has been already destroyed or degraded. Fuel wood, fodder collection has damaged our forest and grassland. Now if you see this graph, from 1972-2005, see the decline in uh, habitat. The tiger disappeared from Central Asia in 1970s. Tiger disappeared from Java in 1930. Javan tiger has extinct. <coughs> tiger disappeared from China in 1990s. See, this is the steep decline of our wildlife. And uh, precisely this graph is related with the tiger and the tiger habitat. So historical tiger number, uh, tiger is increasing in number in India. Now these are some of the recent scenario, the man-animal conflict. You can see on the top left picture, it is of gear forest. A lion is sitting just in between the road of the forest road and a vehicle full with passengers are just at very close quarter to that animal. The men are in hurry, they are blowing horn and they always try to push the animal out of his own home just to move around. See the bottom left, a male lion in a street of a village on the outskirt of Gir forest. This is the scenario. On the top right, a tiger and the people, the village people collecting grass from the forest and the tiger is roaming around. And the bottom right image, a panther is attacking on a forest guard, the rescue team somewhere in Borivali National Park and the surrounding area, the outskirt of Borivali National Park. The incidence of panther <coughs> entering to human habitation is now increasing. Now it is the big question mark like whether man is entering the wildlife habitat or the wildlife which is entering the human habitat. So that is a big question and it is debatable thing. We have to think over. We have to learn coexistence with all this creature because they are all needed. The existence of man is not possible without our biodiversity. Because Salim Ali has ra very rightly said that animal can survive without man. But man cannot survive without animals. So it is very true. But unfortunately, this wisdom is there. It is a big question mark. See, this is a wild elephant in some of the jungle and the fringe area of jungle. A wild elephant has entered a village and attacking a man. Probably that elephant has killed a man. The interference of human being in elephant habitat is too much in our northeast region, in Assam and Meghalaya area, as well as in the south Indian Karnataka forest even in Tamil Nadu forest and Kerala forest. So, sometimes it happens that the animal lose its temperament and it attacked on him, attacked on man. So, this kind of incidents we have to reduce, we have to learn coexistence, we have to respect our animals, then only animal will become friendly. Now see, this is the scenario of uh, vulture in 1980s. This picture is in outskirt of Delhi. Today, the scenario is different. The vulture population in India in those days, in 1980s, 
it was believed to be in several million because not a single village in india which was devoid of vulture in those days every village has large number of vultures existing and they were feeding on the carcass of the animals the wild animals as well as domestic animal the carcass which has been usually thrown outside the uh, village area on the outskirt of area where this vulture population used to thrive but discovery of a drug known as diclofena that has taken toll of 98% of gypsum vulture population this species is known as gypsum bengalensis you can see this picture the head is dropped down the vulture is not able to keep its head steady upright in position there is some muscular problem and that is known as visceral gout the disease known as and this gout is due to a drug which is ingested unknowingly from the carcass that poor bird has eaten usually the cattle breeder they give an injection of diclofenac just to use as a pain killer and this drug is accumulated into the muscle and fat layer under the skin that is in subdermal layer and if only 0.1% of this contaminated flesh is eaten by a vulture this vulture is highly susceptible to this drug and it get kidney failure because of this drug and failure of kidney results in a disease known as visceral gout by this way unknowingly invention of a veterinary drug we have lost not only from india but from asia 98% of the vulture population within 20 years this rate of extinction of a species is believed to be 10000 time more faster than that of the natural extinction process the another story of marine turtle now see this <coughs> marine turtle and this picture is of gahir mata gahir mata area is on the east coast of uh, in the state of orissa a wonderful sandy beaches are there and millions of turtle used to come ashore to dig a nest pit and lay eggs large number of turtle they need a sandy beach for egg laying but the man was existing fishing is a age old business of man man has started fishing first and then agriculture it is said that man is cultivating their crop since last 10000 years but the fishing press practice was older than that so since the mechanized fishing has started this fantastic scenario of large number of female turtle coming on shore and laying eggs has become an exceptional case and they have stopped coming instead of that their dead bodies are floating down on the sea shore this picture all this is the dead body of olive ridley and green turtle on the same place where earlier the large number of female used to come for nesting why this has happened because the man has invented mechanized fishing and mechanized fishing was being done by a troll net and the trolling boat this troll netting has taken toll of this poor creature it is said that the mortality rate in turtle egg is too high one out of 100 egg is hatched and is reached to its adulthood 
a female single female used to lay more than 100 egg every year but out of that only one turtle got survive and reach to adulthood now you see the what is the rate of mortality high probably the highest rate of mortality observed in a vertebrate fauna higher vertebrates so because of large amount of trawl fishing the mechanized fishing was responsible for this incidence large number of turtle has been killed and their carcass ha- carcass have been thrown and this floating away from the sea shore now these are the carcasses as drone on the shore we don't know how many carcasses were uh disposed and decayed in water itself probably double than this so this kind of things is the present day situation this is the big challenge for the conservation government of india has placed this species in schedule 1 of wildlife protection act but merely putting in schedule 1 of wildlife protection act does not provide sufficient protection to this poor species there should be many active participation and active implementation and strict implementation of law is needed to save such poor creature now these are some of the recent scenario the man animal conflict you can see on the top left picture it is of gir forest a lion is sitting just in between the road of the forest road and a vehicle full with passengers are just at very close quarter to that animal the men are in hurry they are blowing horn and they always try to push the animal out of his own home just to move around see the bottom left a male lion in a street of a village on the outskirt of gir forest this is the scenario on the top right a tiger and the people the village people collecting grass from the forest and the tiger is roaming around and the bottom right image a panther is attacking on a forest. this is the another incidents and recent phenomena of loss of wildlife that is road kills high speed vehicle and railway they are taking toll of our large number of animals it includes tigers leopards elephants many of other animals we are still if we if we take a list of all wildlife including the so- smaller wildlife like measles deers antelopes jungle cats and all this foxes jackals wolves hyenas all these wildlife you you keep on listing it is the the figure what we uh we, what we draw is really threatening so a large number of the drivers of vehicle need to be aware because the animals do not have any judgment of fast flying road vehicles automobiles and a very high beam of light and nowadays the cars and trucks they have halogen light it is very difficult for the survival of the wildlife when a road is passing through a forested area it is very serious matter we have to think about but still we have some hope as on the last year's data 2021 there is 981 protected area across the country of them 104 national parks and 566 wildlife sanctuaries 97 conservation reserve 214 community reserve in addition there are 
51 tiger reserve, 18 biosphere reserve and 32 elephant reserve. If we protect this, at least some amount of biodiversity can be protected. Some amount. Because many biodiversity, many animals, they don't know about boundary of forest. They keep on moving around. So on the buffer zone or the outskirt of the protected area, the village nearby the forest or grassland, the animal used to go across that village because that was the older boundary of that forested area where the human being has encroached large amount of land. In 2020, Indian government created the world's first sea cucumber reserve in Lakshdweep. And the name of that Sea Cucumber Reserve is, is being given on the name of Dr. K. K. Mohammed Koya. He was a leader of that area. And K. K. Mohammed Koya Sea Cucumber Conservation Reserve, it is the first in entire world of its kind. The largest marine conservation reserve, that is Atta Koya Kangal Marine Conservation Reserve and the first protected area of marine birds in India. PM Sayyid Marine Birds Conservation Reserve that also exists in Lakshadweep. So, these are the protected area network. It is very essential for giving total protection not only to the animal species but to entire forest, entire habitat. So, entire umbrella has to be protected. That is the actual need. See, this is the conversion of land or diversion of forest land for the other purpose is, is very much damaging. You see, in uh, India, the data is given of only one year, that is 2019, January 1st to November 6th. That is only 11 month data. And this data is given by Ministry of Environment and Forest. You see, Total 114, 114 square kilometer of forest land is converted for the other purpose. It is diverted for the other purpose in 22 states of India. Now this is a very serious matter and if we want to protect our wildlife, the habitat has to be protected. Otherwise it is very difficult to protect our uh, natural resources. So, this was the thing I want to share with you. The wildlife is our natural heritage and we have to, it is our moral duty to look after our natural heritage, our forest, our rivers, our ocean, our grasslands and all the natural area around us. Thank you very much for providing me this opportunity to share my views with you. Thank you very much.